Hello everyone, my name is Neopeta, and, um, and today we're going to be writing Morons with Pedigrees, Silk, and Steel. Last time on Dragon Ball Z, we actually went over everything to make sure what we want to do with it. And as you can see in the corner here, we have our brand new face, face this time around. Everyone say hi to Habsburg Notepad. I thought it was only appropriate, dealing how we're dealing with incestuous dumbasses. So... What's the actual gist? What's what's the dealio there here, Bob? And the dealio is we're going to try to get as much of this done as possible. Feels weird, doesn't it? You know, try to get every single part of this 23-page document upright and ready to go. But that's really all this is. There's a lot of little stuff. I was debating on adding a special bit. But I'll see how time is and where things are. But I got my coffee. Got my rigid determination. And I have a, a, a time. Time to do things. So let's let's get a going, I guess. God help me. <laughs> Alright, so let's get let's get right. So what I should actually do is we're gonna call this the original preface. Silk and Steel's preface. Point when point when you're doing a redux of a project where only real And fix things. This is no different in Morons with Pedigrees. After expand, expanding some of the ideas out, Petals in the, petals in the Wind, Morons with Pedigrees found itself behind the times and in desperate need of updating. The goal is simple. Integrate and make it all work. The game at its core is a fuck, how do I want to word this? Is a role-playing experience more than anything. Forcing players to think outside the box and understand that not every conflict can be solved by shooting it. As said before, fear goes nothing. <clears throat> Hello, Lord Byron. Actually, I will shrink Byron's portrait here. Yeah, Lord Byron was actually a pretty big influence on how things... The original Morons and Pedigrees was written as... Also because Lord Byron's a really cool guy and is weirdly like a celebrated hero in in Greece. Because he fought during the War of, War of Greek Independence, I believe that was it, against the Turks. Oh yeah, I forgot how much of this is just going to be me literally cleaning things up. God help me. Okay. Alright, whenever a character attempts to perform an action, the character will roll against or with one... Uh, okay, that needs. Uh, whenever a carrot. Well, uh... Oh. 
will over or under one of their one of their humors or under over the amount while rolling with the humor character tries to roll under the amount while trying to actually this would be Uh, the character rolls a d20. Rolls a d20. If acting against the hum acting against the humor, the character attempts to roll over their their value. If roll if rolling in accordance with humor, humor the character tries to roll under the value. And let's see, successful. Okay, performs exceed, actually. If successful. Roll the action with minimal complication. Or understands the situa situation better. If they fail the roll, if they fail the roll, they either relent. Rel either relent or they perform the action with exceedingly poor results. I want to shoot you in the back. If I succeed, I'm going to shoot you. If I fail, I am going to ya yeet my gun and probably shoot my friend because I am an idiot. Okay, let's see. This was the weird one, so... Are in opposition to each other, both will tend to roll against or with their humor. If one is successful, the character is victorious. Two or more characters. Position to one another. All the characters. Attempt to roll against or with their respective humor. If one is successful, the character is victorious. Character and the character is victorious, and the other defeated. If both are success, actually. It both are successful. The two will either come to a draw or will continue their bout or will continue their bout. Continue their clash with no victor. Both are unsuccessful. Then both fail miserably. Uh, then both fail miserably. They'll probably hurt themselves in the process. Yes, it is entirely possible to lose a fight against someone, and but both of you fail miserably at doing your job. You're both really bad at things. Because again, you're morons. Like, you are not <laughs> the smartest people in the world, but that's the point. Uh, let's see. Characters regain plot power. Actually, this was written early. Characters will regain plot power as as they continue play. 
as they as they continue to play, as they grow in importance. As they grow in importance, complete plots. Engage in skullduggery. Re or find themselves. Regain plot. Now engage in skullduggery or influence others. They will they will also lose plot power just as easily. Okay, so we've got that done. Hi, ho. Do I want to change the name of the characters? What would I change the name of the characters to? Uh, let's see. Tabletop RPG characters as actors. That could work. If we want to play up the show angle, that's kind of the idea is that they're more of like a show. That could work. It wouldn't be flawless, but it could work. And if we go under the idea that it's like a show almost, then it would be. It would also encourage players to act a little bit more dramatically because it's. You're not. The players aren't playing characters, they are playing actors. You are an actor in this very grand stage going on as of right now. And whether it's a drama or a tragedy or a comedy, we don't know yet. But we all know that people are plotting, people are doing things against one another. Does that work? Uh, we use the term actor. That could work. We shifted the focus over to actors. That would also work for my idea later on. So, so yeah, we could do actor creation. How many instances of the word character are mentioned in this? Ah, yes, 150, not 156. So, we want to select the word character, and we want to change it with the word actor. Don't worry, this will definitely not come to bite me in the ass. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, there's so many. So, yeah, we're going to go through here while we're reading things and uh, make sure we have all the names right. Uh, let's see. Whenever in actor. Actually, let's check something real fast. We want to go do this and we want to find a, a actor. 32. In actor. Place all. There we go. That should fix most of our issues, or we're going to get yelled at because it's not. Uh, power. Uh, well, let's see. Whenever when creating an actor, player must follow. Another oh, aristocratic mouthpiece. It is a teens of an individual. In the 18th centuries, where they were born. Expectations, royalty. So we want to change the things like this, the character. Actually, you know what we're going to do. We're 
I'm gonna change everything there. We're gonna change it back. We're gonna pull it back, but what we're gonna say is actor creation, the aristocratic character, aspects of an individual. 19th centuries where you, where they were born and where they stand in society. Community and I have a direct number of the royal family, the characters influence on others. Aristocratic family of landholders. Has certain expectations of them, but overall their name, fame, caring is actually what we should do. Uh, fuck. Yeah, fuck it. We'll keep it with character creation. So, let's see. Uh, expect the hold up. So, what other social classes would there be? So, we want to do social classes in 1700s. Elite, established, middle class, technical, middle class, new affluent workers. The yeoman, the cottager. can do is we can do 1700s social class 1700s maybe Germany peasant Cinderella life we get the electro counts of Prussia yeah, the Prussian actually it would be Austria let's do Austrian social classes Social classes, 18, 1700s. I don't know why it defaulted to Aust Austrian. What's well, Australian up? Austrian social classes. Let's see. Ah, royalty, aristocrats, high business class. Urban professionals, low business class, cottagers, servants. What would be another social class that you could stick in there? Possibly. Hmm. Probably you could do... Something like governmental. Actually, no, that would be falling more into the. No, this is your social class where you were born into. Sort of charm about them. Their new money attitude. We're all professionals. Say paid with some of higher status. 
Hector and his servant finds themselves able to speak their minds. Okay, clean up the clergy. Yeah, we need to clean up the clergy here. Character is a servant of the uh, servant of religion. Actually, a servant of the cloth has dedicated their life. They're dedicated their life to the church and God, God's ever vigilant gaze. Gaze upon the world. While some clergymen. Cler actually, when the servant of the cloth individual has dedicated their life to vigilant gaze upon the world, a clerg clergyman are not exclusive men, but who hold high office always are. Nuns, monks, are nuns, monks, and other. Uh, uh, actually, how much room do I actually have? Not much. I have about hmm, let's see. So I want to put it in the clergyman of dedicated their lives to God. Some some use some use their religious station as a couple of seeds and other problems. Everyone respects the clergy, but one misstep in the clergy often finds itself replaced. So we want to do that, and we need to put in a footnote right here uh the clergy is an exclusively men none is an exclusively men but most of the, most of the time a a woman as a member of the clergy clergy would most likely be a nun nun or canoness no that's not it is that actually yeah, a Roman cat member religious order women community please that's ruled the same way as nuns but most likely be a nun or similar affiliation Right, you just want to give a bit more nuance, possibly add a specialty system. Okay, we're going to need to give all of these a little bit more nuance. So, agriculture. Agriculture. And knowing the land. The land is the most valuable. Part of an empire. Each small patch of dirt. Significance in the rulers and those who understand it. Actually, each small patch of dirt holds significance to anyone who possesses it. Often being regarded as the lifeblood nation, high class agriculture, you know, high class agriculture, those who understand the land, those who understand crops, growing cycles, growing cycles. And various of other naturalistic farming. Another, another actually, what we should another natural farming 
and other natural features of the land. Bureaucracy. No, na no nation runs sim simply by the will of its of its king. King. It runs off the will of its king and the force of his government. 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 Okay, let's see. One, two. Ah. Well, it's getting the force of its government. The bureaucracy is the Byzantine in structure of laws, laws, finances, and rulership that require the needs that require, actually, how do I want to word this? Bureaucracy is the Byzantine structure of laws, finances, and rulership that require, that is required to make a nation function, function properly. So, business. Of commerce, wealth, power are all part of the middle class experience. Experience of owning, of owning and operating a personal business. While it may not be immediately obvious, Understanding the natural flow of the money and trade goods through an empire also connects you, also connects with others, with those who need it. Who need them. Cleric. God is, God is a powerful powerful being and requires his holy servants powerful being requires his holy servants to enact his will on the world this is the cleric this is the clerical this is the clerical importance. Ah, oh, this is the ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastic? Ecclesiastical. Yeah. This is the ecclesiastical duty of those of those in the administrative body of the church. Influence and power is needed to enact his will. And those, these positions often have both. So the idea behind it is like a cleric is someone who can who has position, who has authority. You are the court's cleric. You are a preacher. You are someone with importance. You are a individual who has that divine, you know, you are a named member of the clergy. However, <laughs> a layman clerk, a layman clergy is you're a random dude who spreads the word of God and everyone loves you for it. You under... You understand less of the bureaucracy behind things, but you understand more of the people, and the people understand you. The, you know, a, a cleric speaks Latin in church, you speak the native language. So we have cleric education. Teaching the future. is a noble profession. Needed by many for 
you can find many from from highly paid tutors to the lowly lowly surf peddling good uh, peddling peddling knowledge for bread education also allows the deeper connection to the world of scholarship ship and understanding of the natural world entertainment there would be no world there would be no world Uh, how do I want to do entertainment? Entertainment, like the idea behind entertainment is like quite literally, you are an entertainer. You are someone who goes around and you entertains people. Because technically, like, you know, entertainment can be low business, cottagers, or servants. So let's see if we want to do that idea. It would be the idea of, okay. High in power and, and luxury often even though often require distraction from the busy busy lives of running a power of running a powerful country. That is where entertainers come in. While all many are poor and simple others demand others are others hold a unique position of power in a unique position of power inside the power of Unique position of power over those they have ingratiated themselves with. Entertainment. So to give you any like entertainment and socialite are the exact same thing. That's the weird thing. They're they are kind of the same thing. However, how they do things is very different. Entertainment is the man who runs in with jugg and juggles for everyone, and everyone claps. Everyone likes him, because he juggles, and everyone's laughing, and, and that guy, he especially loves you. He'll You juggle for him privately, because he loves you for it. And he'll tell you things that no one else wants to know about, because you don't care, you juggle. And suddenly you know things you shouldn't, and it's bad. Well, Socialite is the kind of person who's like, oh, well, of course, haha, <laughs> look at that, like, I talk to you, my... My job is conversing with you. I have no other purpose in life. I am incredibly sad. And welcome to the wonderful world of the 1800s. The 18th century, everyone. Uh, let's see. Finance. Commerce is... Boost in the wheels of progress. All stations to f to advance into the future. Uh, those of high standards and the value of well on a macro scale, large swaths money to increase at least their already massive wealth those of lower standing pinch pennies pennies to become to become wealthy to become more rich because yeah no one really deals with finances so we need to do laborers, laboras, so, 
hard work. It's raining work. Deadly work. Good work. It's all a true. It's all a true person needs. In this dreadful world we live in, labor, laboring is is a strong body and st strong mind, able to keep the able to keep the world spinning for their betters. Law. In the years prior, the years before, handled by the king, by the king's, the king's decree. Free, but as their power grew. And their domain widened. Widened. In the years before, the law was handled by the king's decree, but as their power grew and their domain widened, they acquired experts on, on the various laws to protect those those in need. Lawyers the cities soon merged well versed in legal precedent and able to defend their clients land and clergy god speaks all languages And rarely does his voice fall on deaf ears. The laity. The laity. Is that how you spell it? Laity. Laity, all the holy men and women who spread the word of God to those who not read, cannot see, or cannot witness his divine light. They may not. Uh, let's see, how do I want to word this? Um, so they cannot witness his divine light. They may not... Okay. Follow the... Stru okay. They may not follow the structure of the clergy. Uh, they may not structure the st of the church, but their faith is what drives them. Yeah, there we go. So you don't need to be open. Medicine. 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 Um. I always thought about getting cottage or medicine. I never knew if I should or not. Because Cottager only has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, you know what? I can probably give the Cottager medicine and make the idea being that they're more like a medicine man. Oh, okay, everybody. Ding, ding, ding. Guess who? Guess what we get to do now? Oh, no, everyone. Oh no, looks like someone made a boo-boo. Looks like someone made a boo-boo. Time to make fun of them. Okay. 
Everyone laugh at X uh, at him. Ha ha ha. Uh, X Curry Load 101343. No, I don't want to be famous. And no, I don't want to buy your stupid fucking views from your stupid, stupid site. No, you absolute cretin of a human being. You are little more than a disgusting fact of life that I have to deal with now. You are nothing. You are a pathetic waste of breath, air, and flesh on this beautiful place we call Earth. And I hate you for that. And I wish for you to know that I hate you and wish for nothing more than for you to on hero. So, thank you. Now, you are getting banned. Ha ha ha. What a gay lord. The gay lord. I always never knew why that was like an insult. Like, come on, wouldn't you want to be called? Ah, yes, it is me, gay lord. I'm down. Sounds like a He Man villain. Knowing He Man, a He Man hero. Uh, natural healing. Natural healing. Uh. With the advancement of technology. To undertake the profession. Medical procedures. Have never. Procedures have never been more consist consistent. Only a few bones. Only a few bone saws. Medical textbooks. And bloodletting. Bloodletting is required to save those on the field. Uh, let's see, military. Uh, rifle in. And saber on their side. And a horse under them. What's under them? A character. A, mili a military man is one dressed for duty and ready to follow orders. Order, orders without question. Serving in, in his mag in his Majesty's armies. And fighting the good fight for those who deserve it. And with military, I'm going to have to put a footnote here. A footnote. Military women and those of the auxiliary, auxiliary corps. Or those of less, quote, professional uh, standards. Like that, that's just a fact of, fact of life right there. Uh, socialite. Knowing everyone. This is important as controlling them. This is important as controlling them. Terse words. Simple laughs and the and the pinpoint accuracy pinpoint accuracy of a compliment can be the difference between life and death. Socialites to walk the court to walk the jungle of the court. Is, is to be a predator with fine clothing. Property. Owning land and property is just as important as underst understanding it. Many, many of those who troll 
Speaking of those of Upper Station, states income reside more work work on their property power is for those who possess it Why is property down there? Shouldn't it be above socialite? Yeah, why are you... Control X, Control V. Now we want to delete row. Okay. So, we got all of these. Need to paste. Do we want to do this right here? If we want to do it like right here, what it would be is we paste it here, we bold all of these, and then we have the table. If we fit the entire table right here. We can fit the entire table right here, and we put this right here. Ah. Uh, hmm. Unless we do something like this. So. Wait a second. Wait a second. Line spacing single. 1.5. Format line spacing single. Why do you look that way? Huh. Okay, so... Ah, uh, so... Let's see, these are by no means... Rich or poor, there are boundaries to everything. These are by no means equal in any way. Royal bureaucrat is a princeling, able to command tight divisions of the government at a whim, while a servant bureaucrat is condemned to a small office pushing papers. Writing the character's career, note, note what they are. What they, what they are. Okay, military individuals, higher their rank. Actually, so, we select this. When writing the character's vocation, note down what they actually are and do, allowing for a greater understanding of the character's position in society. Position in society. Actually, that is characters can have multiple careers through their lives. Vocation. Vocation is their natural calling. Their natural calling with their natural calling and disposition. And disposition at that time. So, effectively, this line right here, multiple careers, is I am, I am Sergeant Johnson. That's a terrible one. I am Sergeant Bill, but I am a finance. Yeah, I'm a finance, uh, low businessman. But I'm a finance low businessman in terms of game. You know, what does that mean? But, like, my job as Sergeant, you know, Bill Humphreys. Is I was a, like, requisition officer. 
or I was a quartermaster. That is my position in the army right now. I have a military rank, but it doesn't really mean anything at that time. That's not the point. That's not the the thing which you're, you're supposed to be focusing on. Because I am a finance person. Oh, geez, Rick. Uh, let's see. So, what the vocation is natural calling and disposition. That's fine. Specialty will go after this. Actually, what we should do is vocations. So, this is. Heading two, if we do heading two, we go to heading three, and then we add specialties after. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, whenever a check is called, the character's career is relevant, they add an extra d20, regardless of whether or not this is helpful. We'll add another d20. I deleted it. I didn't check. Oh, not poggers. All right, that's that's fine. That's that's just that's just okay. I just spent the past like twenty fucking minutes writing that. God fucking damn it, Google Docs. Just give me what I want. Okay. All right. This is fine. We're not going to panic about that. What we're going to do is I'm going to put a note for myself to write those in later. Uh, big note. Dumb fuck. I'm going to make that nice and big for me because me dumb. I uh, don't... Rest of vacations you forgot to paste in, you absolute cretin. Yeah, I notepad good, notepad bad though. Notepad bad some days. Notepad make mistake. Oh, God, now everything's breaking. Okay, so we want to put specialties. Specialties don't have to be very big, but so. Specialties. Every... It's a unique soul in this vast and terrible world. In this vast world. With their own histories and problems. A, char a character at creation starts with a sing with a single. Actually, do we want to make that? We could probably call them like backgrounds, maybe. Ba no, that doesn't sound right. Um, quirk.
Uh, will it be hobby synonyms? Yeah, it would have to be quirk. That's what I'm gonna have to work with. Her, 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 it's quirky, huh? Quirks, a character, character creation, uh, character creation starts with a single quirk, which represents their history, history and specialties they have amassed over their lives. Quirks can, quirks are often own, quirks are one, one to three words that summarize an aspect of the character life whatever a quirk whenever a quirk is called in, whenever a quirk is called in question the character adds a care a character adds 1d20 and adds a d20 to their role to the role to the role Quirks are, and I should do is, quirks are universally not simply positive. Everything about a character called a quirk. At some, at some point, as they develop as characters, as they develop as characters, they may adopt additional additional quirks, which become an important part of their identity and con and concept and and con blah blah blah. Uh, quirks which become an important part of their identity and concept through their their event through. Uh, on on their mission to con on their their life on their ambitious quest. Example quirks. Crime. Actually, what was the Crimean War? Fifty three. No, that's too early. So we want to do uh, English wars. 17. So we will do. My sore campaign veteran. India for the crown for the crown of England has seen many exotic lands and suffered and suffered dangerous attrition. So we also want to do character has expressed interest in more artistic endeavors endeavors earning them both praise and dismissal from their peers dying the character knows they are dying not long for this dreaded dreadful world not long for this world but they spend their last month months on is their choice each moment is a ticking clock toward the end
What would be another good, like, negative quirk that can still be, like, used for things? Uh, oh, yeah. Fanatically racist. Is fanatically racist to those of different ethnicity or different ethnicities or creeds. Pretty much you play into it, you're going to get more dice. If you want to get into a fight with someone who isn't the right color, go for it. Hey, that person is Irish. Oh, guess what time it is, kids. It's time to beat the shit out of them. What's your superpower being racist? So now we want to put Quidditch's heading to probably put quirks on its own page. Select everything. Control Shift Eight. What is with... Oh, yeah, I know what happened there. Oh, we got... Oh, I know. Uh, we'll add another one. It was Latin. Stands in... Speaks of Latin, language, language of the church, church, and other occultic, other occultic problems. Because nothing says 18th century problems then. Oh no, everyone, I feel not feeling too good. I'm going to consult, you know, fucking occult shit, even though. It, it, don't worry, I found a book. This is going to be fine. Oh, I saw a campaign then. Here we go. That should allow characters to get a little bit more personality. And so it would be if you have three if you have two characters who are the exact same. Am I actually done with everything of the quirks here? Yes. So if we, like, put in an example of, you know, you know, Sergeant Bill. Actually, we'll call it, you know, that would be a good one. Okay, actually. Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. At the end of the day, both of these guys are the same. If we were to be playing in a Hamilton-themed game, both of these guys would be lawyers in the high business. High business class. That's what both of these guys would be in. However, that's where things get a little bit more complicated. Burr's going to have things such as, you know, wealthy upbringing. You know, power, you know, powerful connections. While Hamilton is going to have a young, scrappy, and hungry. And Washington's aid. These are an immediate difference between these two. They are going to play very differently. They are going to act very differently. They are going to want to do things differently. Because they are... They have different quirks on them. So that's just another subtle encouragement to like, I'm going to shove you in this direction of how you do things. And we've immediately snapped them into place. Am I saying this game could also be used for a, ha you know, a Hamilton game? Yes, it can be. Good, good coffee. It's 
set of humors. Humors work pretty well, all things considering. Okay, now we hit the through. Now we hit this part. Main character. Oh boy. So, main character needs to be completely gutted because. Uh, obviously, we are not taking place at Gakko Academy. Where do I even first mention the main character? Okay, so we go past here. Okay, we'll create the main character. He's meant, yeah. Yeah, we need to fix that after this. But, uh, the main character. So, story taking place. We'll focus on a single individual. Single individual in the grand cacophony. Problems. The problems facing the court. That being the main character. The main character main character MC is the focal point of the story. Is the focal is the focal point of the story, whether or not the focal point of the story, whether it being they are acting as a centerpiece, centerpiece to the, in, the entire situation, or, or acting as the instigator, instigator to the situation, the instigator of the problem, of the problems being faced. The main character. The main character struggles, struggle, pain, exhaustion, and ultimate destiny is is what makes morons with pedigrees a story. However. However, the main character is not a player character. Acting individual, out of the control, players, and in sole own and in sole ownership of the storyteller. Let's see there. I'm... Players in the sole ownership of the storyteller. Their ultimate destiny, their ultimate, their final, from this, actually, from the beginning, of the first scene, do the closing epilogues. Epilogues, the, the MC's problems, problems, quirks, and station. MC, MC, actually the main character, I, I'm dedicated now, I've just been typing main character, not MC like I should have been, but first scene closing, oh, first scene to the closing epilogues, the main character is the crux, my crux, decisive moment point, particular point. Is the crux of the issue. Is the crux of the story. They are the main focal point of where things occur. 
all of the various player characters characters are interacting and trying to get closer to the main character and main character to influence deduce or simply eliminate them from the equation the best way to sum up morons with pedigrees is that you are the ensemble cast to a single play you are not playing hamlet you are playing every single character around hamlet you are not playing macbeth you are playing every character around macbeth you know, I you know, you are not playing. Probably, if you if you were to put a gun to my head for it, Hamilton, the idea would be you are not playing. Ha you wouldn't be playing Washington. You would be playing the administration. One of you would be Hamilton. You'd have Burr. You'd have Jefferson. You'd have. I can see it. However, it was like the, if you want to do like more Revolutionary War thing it would be no one's playing hamilton but like a player is burr a player is all his friends i can't remember like lafayette and stuff like that that's who you'd be playing as so the main character isn't like perfect but it's like each individual little story has a, has a main character and that's the point and you do not have control of them <laughs> Loose or not, main character is the driving force of the narrative, but not necessarily, not necessarily the character's narrative. Situations will erupt behind the scenes. Scenes, problems will emerge, and people will end up hurt. It's all fair game in the deadly, in the deadly dance court. So, what we actually probably want to do is, we're not going to add in the three gauges here, actually. And... What we can probably do is we'll add a second different kind of gauge. So, what we want to do is we want to select all this. Pasta. Hmm. Let's see. So I'm actually go away, tiny Japanese woman. Ah, uh, the main character I'm forcing. The entire idea of Petals in the Wind was the idea of you have to kind of take care of the of your main girl just as much as anything. So if we want to actually if we want to amp things up in this regard. Half of me wants to keep the three gauges in, the other half of me does not want to keep the three gauges in. However, what I'm going to do, though, is I think I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut that section, but I am going to add a section later on because I cut that. But we are, what we all going to do is we're going to do uh, example main characters. 
Oh, who, which one do I use down here? Thomas Cleese. Not your young age. Uh, we'll do Henry, um... Actually, what's an English last name? Davies. Actually, uh, English aristocrat. Uh, let's see. Do you want to do something with... Yeah, welcome, Aragon. Actually, uh, Blair, Quill, Richard, Smith, Thomas. Well, it's Fletcher. Henry Fletcher! Fletcher Service. Uh, Henry Fletcher. Young man of 17. Inherited his father. Has inherited his father's estate after his tragic, tragic illness claimed his life. Unbeknown, unbeknownst to many, Harry Fletcher, Sir Harry Fletcher, Sir Arnold, Sir Arnold Fletcher, had a large amount of savings up from stocked up from small investments. And a large amount of savings stocked up for small investments and other, in other money, in other, uh, I really want to wear this, in other technical. Young man is now one of the richest in the entire re region. The fact that has many eyeing, eyeing his choices and decisions. Abigail. Uh, let's do uh, random Spanish female name. Ultimate bank of five gorillion. We want five thousand. Give us Spanish names. Candelas. Don't care. Ah, Candelas Zavalas. Oh, widow. Hey, widow. A widow of 32 has recently come in a widow of 32 the woman uh, she's been in constant mourning mourning 
since the death of her husband. Husband in the war. However, how other others have others have come come bearing bearing news that she may actually a widow of thirty two. She has been in constant mourning since the death of her husband in war, or not? Dennis has been secret has been secretly having having affairs and other escapades and other escapades in her indirect court court for years after her her husband's demise. After now that it's been it's been revealed, hello. Now that's been revealed, others are most some are seeking to protect protect her while others seemingly want to destroy her. So, Kandala Savalas, and we can probably do another random name we want to do. Uh, let's do an Italian name, why not? And we'll just do 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Luigino. What the fuck is Luigino? Is that, a, is that a name? Yeah, I'm going to yeah, that's a name. Insignia. So, Leonzio Monteri. Loenzio. Da da da, mamma mia. So. I'm dead in the street. Moretti. Leonzio Leonzio was a well known Actually, when did the conduct party stop? There it is. So when did the conduct party end? No, yeah, come to the party, wouldn't work. Uh, God, what would it be? Italian. Yeah, I know. Was a well known. Brute and thug and. Brute and thug was a well known influencer. In the small town of Lorenzo, Lorena. Uh, actually, we want to do that's it. The Castia, small town of the Castia. Well, no influence, for instance. It's death. Many of former associates have begun. Blame one another. Blame one another for his untimely demise, leading to tensions all throughout, all through the area. Who murdered Mr. Moretti? Who murdered Mr. Moretti? 
So you kind of get the idea of like each of these main characters. Like here's the situation. Here's what they kind of want. How do you deal with it? Henry doesn't quite know what he's doing. He's a young man of 17 and kind of needs his own influence of where he wants to go in his life. You know, Mr. Zav Mr. Zavalos kind of wants to make all her problems go away. And is will what, what is she willing to do with it? Moretti is dead. <laughs> it's like, Moretti is already a dead man, but he still is the central character. He is someone that is so important. And his influence is what drives the story. Who murdered him? Why did they murder him? Who are his associates? Why were they his associates? What did he actually do? Who was influenced with him? Who knew him? Why was he killed? Perhaps you could slip a piece of paper to one of the players or to say you killed him. Or perhaps no one did. Fell over drunk one night, but that doesn't stop people from trying to fight one another. That's half the fun. So, you know, those those are like example main characters. So we want to do example main characters, Henry Fletcher. It is entirely possible for a main character for a main character to not even be present present in the story. Simply being a mass driving force behind the entire series of events. Uh, a good example of this is Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks. That is the idea. Laura Palmer is not present in Twin Peaks. She is dead. <laughs> that is the entire reason for the show taking place. However, it is all the characters around her that influence it. All the characters connected to those characters and everyone blow going out as it further goes out and out and out and out. Until we, you know, you find out all the the various weird shit going on in the area, so you're like, ah, yes, of course, this makes absolute sense of how we got here. It usually doesn't. It never does. God damn it, David Lynch. <sighs> I also think it's really it, it, it's it's never a bad idea to compare something to some th things that people already kind of know about. People have a vague understanding of these, so. So let's see. Relationships at corner among the aristocracy or 18th century life. People. Create a main character. Well, actually. Uh. From there, the players thought about them. The players begin. The players begin to create members of the ensemble around the main character. Gender created is working connected to a previous character in the web. When the relationship is, what the relationship is like is up to the player. However, every step away from the MC the character is, they receive less plot power. Characters directly tied to the main character possess five. So how many times do I mention MC? Uh, okay, we're changing MC to main character. Character. Let's see. Anyone ever character relationship? You know, add rolls an additional d20 to the roll. These moments of passion, hatred, familial love, or jealousy can lead to serious consequences for everyone involved. 
Presents characters importance in the story being told. That's the story the main character plays out. The amount of plot power the character possesses will change, reflecting their stake in the story. Okay, so now we get to do clicks. Clicks. States. Countries. The court is not composed of a sing of sing of a handful of individuals. No, potentially hundreds of minor faces running around performing small tasks or keeping the maintenance of the world of uh, maintenance of maintenance of keeping or keeping things running smoothly these are these are small worlds inside of the greater community. In a state, is a single, a member of the ensemble acting as its face. Face representing, representing uh, representing their ideals or leadership. Dealing with mem state is the voice of the collected. Co the voice of the collective. Members of of the estate can have personality other issues, but the unnamed masses will follow face or other important characters. Member of the ensemble actually uh, any Actually, any player character tied to a tied to an estate may choose to become the face of the estate, reducing their block power by one. They do, however, they do possess the advantage of numbers and influence over the greater world. Now, what is, the, what is this an example of? What, what does this actually mean in play? So, let's take this for a basic example. You're, uh, actually, here, let's, uh, let's, let's scroll up. So, okay. The murder of Leonzo Moretti. Oh, someone pinged me. Who's pinging me? Do people want? Pending. Uh, yeah, sure. I thought we were already friends, but okay. But, the murder of Luen Lienzo Moretti. Now, let's say, in this small Italian village, there are now three factions of, Loren of Lorenzio's various individual, various members of his larger gang, effectively. Those three would be split up into various estates. You have the guys on the east, you have the guys in the west, and you have guys in the south. None of them like each other. Each of them are represented by a single face. That face is kind of their ideals and who they are. It's, you don't need to tell us all about the South Gangs and every single member of it. No, we only need to know about Mario, who runs it, and he honestly believes Lienzio, uh, was, you know, Lienzio was murdered, and he's going to find the guy. You want to play him? You can but, and if you want to play other characters inside of that gang, then go for it. 
However, another gang says, okay, we just want to go back to business as usual. We don't give a shit. He's dead now. We no longer have to worry about him. I'm moving. I want power. You know, Waluigi, Waluigi there can do whatever he wants. That's another potential player that you can play as. And hell, you can actually have a pretty interesting game of you have you are three bosses of three different gangs, each kind of trying to figure out who killed the main guy. Nobody knows who, nobody knows how, they just know someone's to blame. In a broader sense of this, it would be uh, in The Great, for example, uh, the show that this game is actually based off of Pretty Hard, which is a great show on Hulu, by the way, you should totally watch it. Is, let me double check to make sure. Yeah. The military in that game, in that show, under, fuck, what was his name? Ilya? I can't remember his name. The big fat dude. Very, very funny character. But the military is represented by him. He is the head of the military. He may seem like a boisterous idiot, and he's kind of infatuated with Catherine, and he has his own issues. But he's also loyal. He's loyal to what he... He's loyal to Russia first. Peter second. And he's a genius. He's a great military guy. But he's kind of past his prime. Which you kind of see by the military in general being... We're past our prime. We aren't the military of Peter the Great anymore. We're the military of Peter the fuck up. So it's kind of that back and forth. You understand why he is acting the way he does. And the rest of the military characters you actually encounter in that show kind of act like that. You know, we were once great, but not anymore. Or, like, we're kind of desperately trying to do it. And during the ending, a uh, spoiler warning, <laughs> Catherine launches a coup. You know, it's only, uh, you know, let, let, let's see how, how old that is. Oh, yeah, like... Two and a half centuries old, you know, sorry for the two century old spoiler warning. But during that time, you understand, like, yeah, she influenced him and the military was on her side. However, you also have people like the Palace Guard, who is an entirely different set of people. And they're loyal to him alone, to Peter alone. So you have kind of this back and forth, and that's a story. That is how the estates are modeled. A large group of faceless people, kind of represented by a single individual, but can be drawn from. Can be kind of ripped. Now uh, let's see. Henry Fletcher. Who's screwing who? And, like, my, my example here was... Let's see if this is actually... Yeah. Was like, yeah, the main character, his best friend, is siblings to another person, but they're married. But this, the sibling is married to another person, and the, you know, the best friend's ex lover is here, but his muse is here, but he's secretly lovers with the main character's lovers. Oh no, what's going on there? But there's a paramour involved. Like, there's immediately a step of drama and problems with this from just seeing that, like this entire section over here is already a powder keg waiting to happen and we don't even know what the mc is <laughs> we we don't know now so, let's see so clicks you don't possess the advantage So, I'm going to do normal text paste. So, detailed relationships. The branch of the detail. Ten, use the intensity. Effectively, every relationship associated intensity is 0 to five, 1 to 5, determined by the players. How invested here is in the relationship as well as the bonds that keep them part of together. The intensity determines how difficult it is to change the relationship as well as how difficult it is to maintain the relationship. To maintain relationships. There we go. 
10 intensity among all the relationships does not mean characters start with less, but if the character were to go over, the plot power is reduced by the amount of intensity of the limit. Stay with others. The intensity of the relationship falls zero, then the relationship is severed between the two characters. Honestly, I could probably just go whoop and make this painted black. I'm going to have to format the shit out of this. I know that much. It's going to pain, be painful. It's not gold. They want the main character to do, be a part of, or disposed of. Some characters have a variety of end goals, but not for more. Is there a desired ending? One of the desired endings is present. So actually, what I should do here is... Once... Once a, once a player character, once a player character, set of player characters, actually, once the, reach their desired ending, or those around them, or the player characters, Characters have reached their ending, have reached their desired ending, or have been rendered completely unable to com to reach an ending. The game has officially come to a close. Proceed with the epilogue. Epilogue. To see how things turn turned out for everyone involved. So what the the goal here is, what the desired ending is, is that you select a thing that you want your character to do. You know, yeah, uh, Mario, Goo, go, Googly Goo. Google a goo, Google a goo. You know, he his desired font. You know, his desired ending is find the murder, find the murder. Uh, whatever the fuck this guy, fucking name, uh, Moretti. Find the murder of Moretti. That is his. That is his desired ending. He wants to find murder. And. Like Bioshock games or any of that, that's going to involve a lot of things. You have to, again, it's find out motive, discover problems, find the culprit, apprehend the culprit, deal with culprit. That's a pretty simple one. That's a very overarching thing that you have to do, but there's also a lot of things that you have to account for in stories like this that it's almost difficult to. It's almost impossible to achieve your desired ending right away. However, you also get things like uh, protect my lady. However, you want to do less like uh, what would be a good one. Where is my sample character? Now, Thomas. Uh, protect Henry. You know, Thomas, Sir Thomas of Cleese. You know, his desired ending is protect Henry at all costs. However, if he were to fail that, you know, if, for example, if Henry, you know, failure because Henry was injured, he can shift his desired ending. He's gonna shift it. That's what he wants. Actually, what it, and you know, protect Henry at all costs. But he could shift it, being this like, you know, kill the you know say you know, marry Susan to Henry. 
You know, stuff like that. Just little bits that you can do to improve things. So, I... Uh, so, Sir Thomas Cleese, uh, let's see, we want to do, we have a little bit of room here, so we want to do quirks. Better than a dozen battles, and we're going to give him a bum leg. one iron soul you got his quirks and let's see Susan obviously his big thing is he fucking loves his he, he loves his little girl he's going to do everything he can for her uh, he him and his wife have a working relationship. They they love each other. It's four is very intense anyway. And we also have Norman, who he just really hates. They just dislike each other quite a bit. We'll probably do something like this. Actually... Something like this, we can probably do 20 intensity among all the relationships. So it would be like five, five, like three for Norman here. He just doesn't like Norman. However, if you have things like Henry, uh, what's what did I end up calling his last name? It was Henry Fletcher. Henry Fletcher, four. Sun near his old friend, nearly adopt adopted the boy as his own, as his own, but is blind to his affection for Susan. Oh, yeah. Reason desired ending, plot power generation. We already have some of that. Plots work. Duels work. Influence needs a little. Actually, yeah, we want to do the side note on, on present characters, don't we? Let's reduce you down size. We want to. Eight, everything else is 12, so we want to select everything here, bump it up to 12. So, actually, unlike the present day, yeah, back in the 18th century, no one had telephones. Telephone. Actually, no one had cell phones. No cell phones, let alone a telephone. Vision was was limited by limited to to letter, and often those far away could take weeks, even months. To, for a message, even though those far away could take weeks, even a month, for a message to reach them. 
However, even if the character is not present, they can still influence the story. Non-present characters send letters, influence, uh, influence others by sheer, by sheer weight of relationship, or even have a ethereal hold over other, ethereal hold over others, and their and their uh, situ and their personalities. While they can never be strictly, well, like never be strictly removed, a non-present character should should not be an ever-present problem unless they are actually. Always keep them in mind. Originally, non-player character, non-present characters was written for the hey, yeah, you might get a letter from your dead friends overseas because guess what? This is 1930s Japan, and uh, we're bitch. You're not allowed to be happy, and you know, tora tora tora, as they say. Character, characters, and ethereal hold, letters, cell phones. Like, that's when they, uh, like, any historical game you write, it's always difficult sometimes to get across some ideas. You know, what does that actually mean? You know, Notepad, what the fuck does that actually mean? What that means is we have, as a society, gotten to a point where we are very comfortable with how things work, how we talk to each other, how we interact with one another. It's very different than it was back in the day, or even down to things like technology. Even <laughs> where, you know, when we say, oh, go to the doctor, going to the doctor back in the day was, okay, this man is a barely trained barber and he is going to chop me open because that is the apex of medicine right now or sorry if you can hear terrible things my microphone is playing or hey i am going to send a letter to someone that takes time you know it's not like oh well i'll just you know send a letter and they'll get it the next day nope that takes time that takes weeks that takes months for things to happen and that's like why it's historical games i think aren't really that popular for that reason and i mean like historic like strictly historical things because it's hard for people to kind of wrap their heads around that sometimes, and we end up having a bad tendency of placing assumptions on different places that you normally wouldn't think of. Like, when we say, oh, medieval fantasy, or medieval times, a lot of people are probably thinking more renaissance than anything. Because their head, their, they immediately default to, oh, kind of like Warhammer, or hey, kind of like this. And they immediately see the plate armor, they see the brave big sword, and they see the knight riding on the, you know, the horse with the big, and trying to save the princess and all that jazz. That, uh, that, that wasn't really a thing, but we, it's hubristics, as we default to it, because it's also very easy for us to. And another issue is, like, a lot of games like fantasy, you can get around issues. Oh no, we can't communicate with each other over... Here's some magic stones, just talking to them and you can hear them from the other side. Or, oh hey, there's a problem. We can't travel across magic. It's magic, don't think about it too hard. You know, it's like, it's it's fine. You know, inflation isn't real. Like, <laughs> spend the gold and we make money, it's fine. But that's kind of how, you know, it's, it's, people get scared of historical games. So I think for that reason, more than anything, not because like, ooh, scary history, 
but it's very easy to default to things. And sometimes everyone has a different default. And especially when you're dealing with places that aren't typical, that's another big issue is when you're dealing with non-typical settings. Because everyone can kind of say, okay, we're in a Japanese setting, Rokugan. Rokugan's a very good example. Rokugan is effectively ancient Japan. Stretched over China. But it's also interpreted by a West Westerner. There are things in that that do not make sense. Not even just the magic parts. The, this doesn't really work for what you're going with. But that's not the point. The point is to, we're playing Rokugan, fuck you. I'm playing Craft Clan and I'm going to bonk you on the head because I don't like you. But... You get people trying to put more stuff on that. But if you were to say, okay, we're running a game in Korea, like ancient Korea, people would default to that Rokugan Japanese idea. We're running a game in ancient China. Kind of default, like everyone's dynasty warriors now. Yo, everyone is, you know, Japanese dynasty war. And like, I think that's one of the biggest issues when you're dealing with, like, kind of oddball countries. It's saying odd, you know, like, sorry, Korea is such an odd little country no one's ever heard about. But it's hard to default. Like, we as our minds naturally default to something we know, and that's what media's told us. You know, it's... The, the classic Western doesn't really exist how we think of it. You know, Europe, Europe is a complicated place, but it's not fantasy land. No, that's fantasy England. You know, England, maybe a little bit of France, if you're lucky. Bit of German in there. Everyone's German. What's your name? Carla. You all to go to North Dakota. Welcome to Svensgard. Everyone is Vikings. Like, that's one of the hardest parts about writing anything historical, even historically based. And that's why I'm actually, I'm ranting maliciously about this, A, because I'm very tired, and B, uh, riding eagles and rifles currently has been a bitch. <laughs> it is a bitch to work with. Because that era was so different for every single country, and it's like, how do you pretty much strange reel this? And it's hard. It's not fun. Especially for one person, but that's what I do. All right, let's get going. I, I rambled on long enough. Oh, God. Snippity snap, my back is crack. People are posting stupid shit on the internet again. Oh, boy. Love it. Oh, growth loss, pop power, one shot. Okay, so, good news. We're done. That was actually a lot... Am I missing something? Well, I'm missing this, but I'm just going to do that one thing. And I don't really need more social classes. So let's, let's see how much of an abomination this is. Wow, it's pretty terrible. Uh, I will need to fix these. But... But, but, but... Actually, wait. We are going to add a little point. Main character mode. It is... Is... Actually, what I should say is moron... Morons with pedigrees. These morons with pedigrees can best be can best be described as a play where they care where the players take the role. Roll secondary 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 characters trying to influence the protagonist.
However, actually not however, sometime some people may want to play the protagonist. Protagonist on their own strange adventure. That is where that is where main character mode. Main pending. That is where main character mode comes in. MCM MCM is a single player variant of Morons with Pedigrees. That allow that allows a single a single person to play the game play the game by themselves. Play the game by themselves and allow and tell a compelling narrative by using the mechanics to tell the story. Actually, what I should say is to further the story. So what we need to do Then we need to go all the way up. We pretty much need to do so. The character so n important parts, important changes to the Morons with Pedigrees formula. Actually, to Morons with Pedigrees, the character will always. <laughs> Here, the main character is made as normal. Single player or single player single storyteller or single player storyteller. Storyteller only. Only variant variation of Pedigree, playing a person, person play by themselves and tell a compelling narrative by using mechanics to further the story. It is made as normal, but they possess. Let's say the three starting quirks. I. Uh, But, but they 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 start with three starting quirks. The ensemble is constructed by a similar web, rolling on the following chart. It's constructed by a similar web. However. Actually, instead of roll, instead of choosing the player, the player will roll a 1d6, actually a 1d6 to determine the number of connections they, they possess. From there, each, actually if you... Yeah, one d six determine the number of connections. One d six actually will be one d six plus one. The number of connections they possess. From there, each each member of the ensemble will have an additional additional one d three attachments to them. Feel free to connect to connect to them as appropriate. So we want to do this construction similar way of choosing you feel free to connect them as appropriate. Plots 
plots require do not uh, plots no longer no longer require strict plot actually we could probably do, it would be we go under the idea of plots would require the same amount so it's like each character each character Each character, each character created this way will roll a 1d3, actually a 1d how many, One, two, three, four, five. One d 5 actually 1d10 to determine the relationship with one another with one another and their connections. We just kind of created this one, one, they tend to relationship with one another and their connections. So it would be one to two, actually we would want to do one to two, antagonism, three to four, friendship, friendship, five to six, love, seven to eight, platonic, Nine, ten. Nine to ten, professional. Wait, this one. So, one of the key aspects is that plot power will always be, will always, will always be six. Will always be six for the main, the main character. As the, will be always be six for the main character and cannot go down. And... Will only be six for the main character, but can still be reduced. Reduced, representing their story coming to to a conclusion faster than they can anticipate. All normal plot power generation. Generation is still in place. However, influencing will always net plus one. Will always net plus one plot power. And moving will always net plus one pop plot power. And important scenes. And moving closer. Closer to the main character, no longer apply. When a significant milestone in the story has been reached, they will they will gain plus two plot power instead. So the the main character will plot out the story story in six parts. Well, in plot story in six parts. Prologue, rising action. Actually, it would be it would be prologue, act one, act two, act three. Climax and epilogue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. The acts make up the main main quote meat of the story. Assigning the main character 
a broad goal. Goal to complete. Complete to advance to the next. The prologue acts as an introduction. Problems currently faced by the character. Actually, we want to put the prologue section right there. That's one of the meat. Finally. An epilogue. Conclusion. Story. Of whether not the overall goal overall goal of the main character is successful or not. Should a main character should a character run out of plot power before before the epilogue, then they will immediately go to the epilogue. Epilogue having failed their ambition. Let's see. Is there anything else? Not really. So. We're going to put this right at the bottom. Main character mode is kind of a side thing. I thought, actually, this was a shower thought kind of. I'm like, wait a second. This seems like kind of a fun little little side thing. Being like, why not put in kind of like a single player mode? Kind of bulky, and I don't know if it would work or not, but the it'd be pretty much like design it and play out a story using the mechanics to further your own narrative. So, for example, it would be... Uh, oh no. Uh, what, would, what was a... Oh, uh, Exiled Prince. So, uh, you are an exiled prince, and you are a royal royalty. Uh, let's see. Royalty. Military having suffered from... Uh, with your father being displaced and killed to your treacherous uncle. You have fled to the border and are seeking revenge. Prologue. Find a way. Amass forces. Forces and reclaim your birthright. Act one, crossing the border. Crossing the border. Act two, finding the forces. Act three, a nefarious plot. Climax. Fight for, fight for the estate. Epilogue. I claim the estate. Now, however, uh, things will, things will change. Uh, things will change. And things do go wrong. For example, Act 1, crossing the border. Oh no. I've been shot. <laughs> oh no. 
I'm now, you know, you know, oh no, something goes wrong. Like, things will go wrong, and that's kind of the encouragement. Like, use the system to help you determine whether or not you succeed or not. And you, you kind of can are able to influence your own abilities and problems with the system. So, yeah, like, there we go. This is, like, what a story would be. But if something goes wrong in Act 1, Act 2 may change. But then that means Act 3, which means Act 4, which means Act 6 is going to change. You know, the final the epilogue is going to change. Like, little things, you can plot everything out. But actually doing it, that's where things get complicated. If you can't cross the border, you gotta now uh, do something there. It's like, oh, well, this is kind of like a natural, obvious plot of me going from point A to point B and me amassing people around me. Like, that's kind of how that was gonna play out. So, that is it. That's it, really. I knew more on the pedigrees. This wasn't gonna be actually a very long process of fixing. And so, let's do word count. I do know we've expanded it pretty, from 19 pages to 26, so there's a little bit of meat there. Yeah, we nearly, uh, we added about 2,000, 2,000 words to it. But what is Morons with Pedigrees? Morons with pedigrees at its at the end of the day is how do you make a game with minimal combat, maximum social role playing, and ultimately, it sort of works. <laughs> That's all I can really say to that. Like it sort of works, and but I think it excels best when you are working with theater kids who really want to get into the role play, who really want to get into character, and if you can use it to more facilitate games and that's arguably what you should be doing with it is not necessarily using it doing like okay make a humor check no it's use it to tell the story there's something problems are going on fix the problems oh no people are getting murdered stop the murders continue the murders that's what the game is really about it is there's the story use the system to tell the story and you might say, that's narrative bolt, narrative wank, and the answer is, yeah, it is narrative wank, but, uh, fuck you. I added, a, I added enough crunch and kind of back-end stuff to bite into it that allows you to make those meaningful decisions. It does, I want it to get you, give you enough where you can stroke your lizard brain as much as you can stroke the monkey brain. Though some people are going to cling on to that. You know, the, the era, and some people are going to want to adapt to other things. It is easily adaptable. That's kind of the point. Like, one of the... Like, they, it was funny. The actual sample idea of it that I wrote a long time ago was... Uh, for the solo mode, anyway, was you are a... Oh, God, what was it? It was based off of, like, your Soviet... Pretty much you're an old politician in Soviet Russia, and you're pretty much locked in a hotel. I can't remember the movie, but I saw that the other day. I'm like, oh, you know, this is this seems like, wh wait a second, this seems like a good idea. Or, like, oh, hey, you are you know, an individual trapped in a situation where violence is not the answer. Violence isn't the point. The point is plots and manipulation and finding out a good reason. It's kind of a DM's challenge, almost, to, to run this game with your friends. Where, how do you get your friends, and how do you get you, the players, to understand what to do? How do you influence them to think with their brains, rather than just looking at the numbers? Because rolling high is good, having high number good, having high number bad... Like, it's kind of a back and forth. I wanted to get that across, but uh, Silk and Seal's done. Like, it did, I did everything I wanted to do with it. Uh, will I be touching morons with pedigrees in the future? I don't know. I mean, I've used the ensemble system for it multiple times because it's just a nice, solid system for making relationships and getting people connected, and you immediately kind of know, like, oh, yeah, well, this makes sense. Oh, yeah, this is here. Oh, yeah, no, this makes sense. It's kind of that immediate snapped to it and like, all right, I understand now. 
if you were to put a gun to my head, I I don't really know what else I could do with this game. Even this was kind of a stretch, and this has only been about two and a half hours. But Morons with Pedigrees was a, a a very focused game, and that's all I can really say about it. Like it was a very focused game, trying to tell a very particular story for a very particular reason. Does it work? I think. Don't know, but that's not the fun. So, thank you all for watching. My name is Neopad Anon, and this was Morons with Pedigrees. Uh, what's the what's the future holding for us right now? Probably on Friday we will do Eagles and Rifles. Get that kind of the preliminary thing set up there. I have the idea. I got the numbers. I got everything I need. But something isn't adding up, and I don't know what it is, and it's going to drive me bonkers. Uh, probably nothing this Saturday. Because I'm still amassing some stuff. I'm getting all the videos for the, uh, little opinions done. So that's going well. I'm up to, I finished the uh, Disney Villains Victorious one last night. Probably after this, I'll get the Troika one started. Uh, it depends on how my throat's feeling, because I'm kind of feeling like it's blown, blown out a little bit. But... Let's see, what else am I forgetting? I feel like I'm forgetting something important. But yeah, that's all I can really say. So, Godspeed, good luck, and I'll catch you all on the flip side. Mm -hmm. Ooh,